This week on Supercars Talk, has Richie Stanaway filled the final vacant seat for 2025? Dave Reynolds gets a new car, and I have some After Bathurst thoughts. The big news this week is actually big news. Richie Stanaway has signed a deal with Premier Racing for 2025 season, uh, filling what is the most obvious vacant seat in the field. Um, let, let's not say that all of the silly season chatter has gone away. There is still a couple of potential seats out there that may be filled. Um, Mark Winterbottom's definitely looking at one of those seats, uh, but this is great news that we will be seeing Richie Stanaway have another go round in the championship um, every year like he's been given lots of shots but it's never quite been the right kind of shot I don't think um, and if he'd stay if Groves had given him the opportunity for a second year like we've definitely seen what he's done at Sandown and Bathurst he did look a lot more competent again like he came out of the blocks hard at Bathurst at the start of the year and then had fizzled a little bit as I suppose he was new to tracks in the Gen 3 era. He's definitely looked a lot stronger at Santa Ana Bathurst. So next year in theory, but then of course he's got to learn a new team, a new car. So that's going to take some time to gel together. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really great. Uh, I definitely think he deserves this extra shot in the championship because uh, there's probably a few guys that have maybe hung around a bit too long, but I do... I want to see Stanaway have a really... I, don't know, I thought this shot at the Groves was going to be his proper shot, uh, but then obviously it's been cut short. But I think this is a great opportunity with him at Premier Racing next year. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they all progress uh, over the next season. But uh, yeah, I think it's a, a positive move for Premier and Richie Stanaway. Now, speaking of the Groves, they did make another signing this week. Uh, it was Garth Tander. He's been signed up long-term for a co-driver role and a strategic advisor role. So basically, over the last couple of years while he's been there, he has been helping the team with their growing and everything. He has a lot of experience in the category. Plus, he's been helping Matt Payne become a better driver, uh, learn how to be a supercar driver. And next year, he'll be taking on that role as well with Kai Allen, uh, with his transition into the main game. Uh, so that's great that the Graves have got him kind of locked down long term uh, he seems to be fitting in well there and doing a great job with the young guys Team 18 has uh, I suppose rushed a little bit well not rushed but they've brought forward the completion of a new car uh, that Dave Reynolds will be debuting at the Gold Coast I don't think they originally had plans for this car to be brought into action this season but after the big shunt that Dave had uh, during practice there at Bathurst they have brought that car forward um they did have a lot of speed earlier on in the weekend that seemed to just disappear after that accident. And they're blaming the lack of speed on the accident and the car's not quite right. So Dave's going to be bang back at the front this weekend. Not sure why Frosty was so slow at Bathurst though, because that car wasn't shunted and that had no pace, just like the Reynolds car. Now, if I don't mention it, I know it's going to get brought up in the comments, but do we really need to talk about the Erebus engineer who ended up assaulting himself at Bathurst? Uh, yeah, just a very, very strange. I mean, I don't know what goes through everyone's heads and when people have been drinking and stuff. Uh, yeah, it's not a great look. Uh, a lot, I've seen a lot of comments, people blaming, blaming Erebus and that. I think it's probably just an unfortunate situation for them. He hadn't been a long-term employee with the, the operation or anything like that. Uh, he has subsequently been given the ass. Um, he, won't, he won't be there continuing. He is being charged. Uh, yeah, just a, uh, a, it just puts a very sour note on uh, what was actually a really good news story with them winning Bathurst. Uh, but yeah, so, sometimes these things happen. It's just a bit unfortunate that they seem to be happening to Erebus a lot lately. And the final bit of news this week, the TCR World Tour will be partaking uh, as a support category with at the Bend 500 next year. I think this is probably a good thing for both categories. It does mean that uh, the Bend will have... A, a, 
I think these guys will produce a pretty good race around the bend. Um, it gives them a high profile event to be part of. So people will actually see this TCR World Tour coming in rather than it being seen by essentially nobody uh, except for the very, very diehard uh, fans of the sport. Yeah, so I think it's a little bit of a win all round um, and it does show you where TCR is in the, the general scheme of things in, you know, Australia that they are a support category to supercars. Uh, I just, I wonder with the, the world guys, if coming across to the bend, seeing the facilities that, and then being kicked out in the paddock while, you know, the supercars teams have the proper pit bays and things. I, I wonder how well that will go down. Now, before I get into the Gold Coast preview and my interviews with uh, Super 2 friends about their weekends at Bathurst, um, just a couple of thoughts I had that I didn't cover off last week uh, because, you know, we were talking about the racing last week, but there is, there is a couple of little discussion topics uh, that came up over the weekend. Um, Jimmy Golding is now fifth in the championship. That is amazing for where this team is at. And he's just been gradually chipping away all year, um, being there or thereabouts. He hasn't had those kind of real headline results. Yes, he did have a pole position and things like that. But um, it's not like he's gone out and won races, say, like Nick Perkett has, but he's just been chipping away. It really reminds me of that Tim Slade 2012 championship where he ended up best of the rest. And Jimmy's kind of been doing that. Um, granted, there is you know, uh, th three different teams in front of him rather than that 2012 where it was just totally dominated by two teams. Uh, but yeah, it, he's fifth in the championship. How the hell did that happen? Uh, and another thing looking really good with Richie Stanaway joining that lineup next year. Uh, they, they're just going from strength to strength. They're not making big headlines about it. They're just slowly chipping away at it. Um, that, I, was, I was actually a little bit shocked, but not shocked that, yeah, he's that far up in the championship. Um, my thoughts about Erebus next year, like I I think they're going to finish the year really strongly. Jack LeBrock um, and Jaden Ojeda, awesome job at Bathurst as well. But there's going to be a Brody size and George Cummins size hole in that whole team next year with both of them going off to DJR. Uh, you, you do wonder if, that's going to affect them bigger than, say, the, the sponsorship loss this year because you could see the, there was a way for with Brody coming back, George is still there, you know, it's essentially all the same team, et cetera. You could see a way for them getting back to the front. Do they kind of lose their way next year if it's Jack LeBrock leading the – not saying – Jack's not a great guy. Like I've been lucky enough to chat with Jack a few times and things like that. He's a great guy in that. But is he going to be able to lead that team forward like, you know, Brody and George have obviously been doing? Uh, yeah, I, I, I wonder whether we're going to see them really drop back down the pecking order and where they kind of are in the team's championship this year. Is that, you know, where they're going to be in the coming years. Um, and the other thing that I found interesting over the Bathurst weekend, the DJR boys have actually swapped positions in the championship. Uh, I think it was ninth and 10th that they are, and now they're 10th and 9th. Uh, but that shows... Uh, seems that since the decision where Anton's made the decision to move away and Davison's been re-signed, all of a sudden the fortunes of those two guys have changed dramatically. And uh, yeah, Anton's actually overtaken Davison in the championship now. Uh, and but yeah, I thought he was, they looked a lot stronger over the enduro campaign. Be interesting to see if that continues for the next couple of rounds or whether it was just something to do with the enduros. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd I was very surprised um, at the change in fortunes at DJR. Now we're back racing again this weekend. We have the Gold Coast, which uh, always springs a surprise or two. Uh, Friday, two 40-minute practice sessions. Saturday and Sunday, the same program. 15-minute qualifying session, top 10 shootout, and 85-lap race both days. Um, last year, the wins were between Waters and Reynolds when Ford's got that boost, and then all of a sudden we're 
super fast for some reason. Um, they both they both got a win and they both got a third position. And then um, Brody and Shane Van Gisbergen were the guys who finished second in the races. Uh, this year, I am predicting that Brody will continue that form from Bathurst and um, be really strong. Matt Payne will be the guy who will uh, challenge him. I think Will Brown will probably be on a bit of, uh, not cruise and collect, but I don't think he's going to get himself involved in any skirmishes that might jeopardize his championship lead now. I think we will see a very quiet weekend from Will Brown. And my out there prediction, I think Brock Feeney is going to come out all guns, absolutely blazing, and it's going to end in tears. He's going to try and, yeah, go, go out and win both races and something will... He'll clip something somewhere and it'll all end in tears and we'll actually see Mostert back second in the championship. Now, as has become customary around here, I've had chats with Brad Vaughan and Campbell Logan about their Bathurst weekend in Super 2 and, well, with Brad Vaughan, uh, his main game Bathurst debut. So enjoy the interviews. And once again, we've got Campbell Logan on the show who's uh, sporting a fancy new hat after his time at Bathurst. Uh, welcome back. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Um, Bathurst, uh, it seemed like a bit of a quiet weekend for you, but I'm, I'm sure lots have happened that didn't, um, we didn't actually see on camera. And you were actually close to your teammate who's uh, taken lead of the championship. So uh, it probably wasn't that bad a weekend for you overall. Um, yeah, sort of the way I've been describing it is it was a, an okay weekend by my standards. I, I don't think it was bad, but I don't think it was anything special as well. You know, it, considering the speed I've had at the previous two rounds at Sandown and Townsville, it was just a little bit lackluster from a, a speed point of view for me. You know, we've shown some really, really good speed and honestly front running speed at those last two rounds. And I just didn't quite seem to unlock it at Bathurst on the weekend. Um, but nonetheless, I learned uh, so much more than I probably thought I was going to learn, um, which is sort of the case when you go to the mountain, you always learn something you don't think you're going to learn. But um, yeah, it was it was an okay weekend. I'm, I can't say I'm satisfied, but I'm not totally disappointed with the weekend. Did you feel how, like, did you feel that there was a lot of improvement over the round earlier in the year? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I, even in the lead up with my preparation, watching onboard footage, I just couldn't help but smile and think how cool is it going to be able to you know muscle this car around the mountain rather than driving scared like I was at the beginning of the year so yeah I think I didn't even get into the 206s last time and this this time I was comfortably in the 205 so a big difference in uh in lap time um and yeah just overall confidence around the mountain but I still need to make another step in that direction which will uh, just give me that last little bit of lap time that I'm chasing for. Do you think on that, um, that it's a good idea having two rounds at the same track in a year uh, for Super 2 so that you've got, you can see that kind of progression during the year? No, not really. I think okay. at the end of the day, we're a development series category and the focus should be on young drivers getting as much experience across the supercar, different supercar tracks as possible. And I think... Um, doing two rounds at any track's probably not a great idea. Two rounds at Bathurst, especially being the first round at Bathurst, is certainly not a good idea because I didn't even get one green racing lap at the beginning of the year, whereas, you know, the race one was completely green. So for me, it was huge to get just some green laps under my belt during the weekend. It was very different to the beginning of the year. So, no, I don't think it's a, a great idea, but it's the cards we were dealt with and you just got to work with it. It was actually surprising on the weekend. Um, the, the races were actually very clean. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there was well, a, compared, yeah. compared to it didn't go full Super 2. There was some very close full Super 2 moments. Um, yeah. Mainly in race two, like when I think Job Stewart was only, there was one car between us when he locked up at the chase. And honestly, I thought he was going to take out my teammate Batesy. And I sort of, even going into the chase, I was sort of like, you know, squeezing up a little bit because he... Um, he straight lined obviously at the chase, but as soon as he did it, dust just kicked up. So I was thinking, oh my okay. gosh, you know, has he hit someone? But luckily, no, he just managed to miss it. And I saw the onboard of Lockie Dalton, who he just cut in front of. And yeah, it was pretty close to say the least. And then, um, yeah, there was another incident with Lockie and a few other guys at the last corner. But um, yeah, there wasn't too many crazy big moments. I think, yeah, that was just oh. it in race two, but it was actually very cool to. And honestly, unexpected to get a full green race in race one. The whole 40 minutes was, yeah, something pretty invaluable. 
Yeah, and uh, it means you actually get some experience around there rather than just driving behind the safety car. Yeah, I've uh, done plenty of laps behind the safety car this year, so no, it was very cool to do a. It's you know a forty minute stint is nearly a full stint in in the main game one thousand, so it's not too far off. So it's cool to um, you know go in there. I made quite a few mistakes, which is maybe not what I expected, but it gave me a new level of respect for the guys who were doing the one thousand, especially the guys who are up the front, you know, winning that, that race just gave me a whole new level of respect for the, you know, the level of attention and concentration and just how little mistakes they make over a whole stint. It, yeah, certainly opened my eyes up. Just on the big race then, um, were you surprised that so many uh, single stint, double stint and then triple stint to the race? I can't say I'm surprised or not surprised. I didn't actually sit yep. in any of the strategy meetings with the team yep. or anything like that. So I honestly had no idea going in. But looking back, I think everyone pretty much did the same strategy strategy except for Lowndes and Murray, which makes sense because they have the option to start Lowndes um, first. Brody and Todd split. Okay. Their stints. Yeah. Is that just because Todd was a little little bit faster? They could manage that and not uh, triple stint Brody on the way home? Yeah, and I think because Brody had been sick during the weekend as well, so it okay. did, did give okay. the the break, so he only had a double stint at the end. But I would yeah. have thought, especially when you've got guys like Winkup and that as teammates, that yeah. you would have separated the stints to have a driver only doing a double stint at the end rather than like it's a long time to be behind the wheel. Yeah. Oh man, one stint's long enough around there. It's pretty yeah. crazy <laughs> to think that they triple stint is. Yeah, pretty incredible. Um, I think it depends, you know, how, how well your co-driver's trucky along. Obviously, when you've got someone like Todd, it opens it up very yeah. much. Same with, uh, it's a very good point with Jamie and, you know, even Scott Pye and those sort of top-level mm. co-drivers. Um, even our guys like Fabs and Lee, you know, they're not yeah. slow co-drivers, so I would have thought it'd open it up. But sometimes it's just good to have the main drivers in there. You know, these guys are super fit, you know. They... Yeah can punch out a 250k race like it's nothing. So I'm pretty sure a triple stint <laughs> at the end of a 1,000. Even though it's a big week, they can still, you know, especially someone yeah. like Chaz, he can just punch out lap after lap after lap around that joint. So I think it's, yeah, kind of depends how you, your day's going. I think you'd have multiple options. But um, to see mostly everyone do the same strategy was a bit of a surprise to me. And um, what did you think of the race? Because it seems to be a bit divisive. Uh, a lot of people are calling it boring. Yeah, well... I've been asked the question before, would I rather win a race by, you know, a car length or 30 seconds? I'm always 30 seconds. I'm a, <laughs> a, I'm a, bit, of, I'm a bit of a purist and it's not just because yeah. that's comfortable, but I like, mm. you know, if you win, you're the best man on the day. And um, for me, it was pretty cool to see Brody, Todd and Brock and Jamie just going hammer and Tom all day flat out. I do mm. think from an entertainment factor, it was slightly boring in that sense that there was no sort of crashes and i thought there was going to be heaps i think everyone thought there was going to be heaps after the lead in from practice so i i predicted that we'd have safety cars all day so <laughs> yeah. I, I thought we'd probably only have about 15 cars finish the race yeah well i think there's a, a few factors which contribute to that you know like the track started off super dusty and there was not much rubber down at all but obviously as the weekend progresses more and more rubber goes down your racing line widens a little bit more so the dust is not as bad. And, you know, a lot of co-drivers and even main drivers, like we saw, made mistakes earlier on in the weekend. So they probably thought, well, you know, I'm not going to make that same mistake again. They're professional drivers. You don't get paid to make the same mistake twice. You know, you make the mistake once and you learn from it, you move on. So I think there's a few different reasons why it wasn't like that. But, yeah, nonetheless, it was pretty surprising to see just the one safety car for, yeah, something that was, you know you thought was going to be a pretty chaotic race. It was pretty calm, but I'm a fan of that, to be honest. Yeah. And that's where I, I'm kind of coming from. Like I, I loved watching that battle all day. That was kind of a pure battle and not interrupted by a heap of safety cars. Um, but it seems we're kind of in the minority at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, there seems yeah. to be a lot of people who um, probably the same co people who complain about people like Jack Smith driving around, but then, <laughs> Um, I know it's probably unfair on Jack as well because he didn't tear up a lot of equipment. Um, but you, you've you've raised the professionalism these last few years uh, to just an, like another level. 
and then people wonder or complain that there's no crashes. Yeah, yeah, and they're probably the same people that don't like the idea of a final series. So they want they yeah. want the entertainment, but then don't <laughs> want the entertainment. So yeah, you can't you can't always can't please everyone, but um, yeah, usually there's a bit more chaos in the great race, which is cool from an entertainment factor. But I thought yeah. to see. Brock and Brody, especially in that last stint, they were just so much faster than everyone else was. From a driver, it's pretty cool, and you you, you have have a lot mm. of respect for those guys. You have a lot of respect for everyone doing the race, but you know when there's two guys who are at another level above everyone else, and you know Brody has been strong at Bathurst always. Brock's been really strong the last few years, like even in the twelve hour, he's been super super strong. So yeah. to watch those guys and you know, as a driver in Super 2, use that to learn for myself and what they're doing and, and try base myself off how they're driving their cars is pretty cool. Um, now, you brought it up, uh, final series. What, what are your <laughs> thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I'm i not that educated on it, to be honest, because... I don't, um, I don't think got many a, of us are. Oh, okay. Well, it got <laughs> announced when we were at the track, so I was busy yeah. doing setup day. So I, I'm not, I yeah. know how it works in terms of there's the sprint, enduro, and then the finals cups or whatever they call it, but I'm not sure how it works with the point system when they get to finals, but regardless, I think it's a brilliant idea. Like, you know, why not change it up? It means everyone has to race. You can't settle down at the end of the year. You know, Will Brown's got a 200 point gap and I'm sure he's not going to slow down for the end of the year, but it would mean he would have to push the entire time. You know, every quality session would matter. You know, how dramatic would it be if the championship leader in the playoff series you know, rode his car off in the shootout and that's done, you know? Yeah. So I, I always think of Ross Chastain's moment in NASCAR a few years ago. That moment would never have happened if it wasn't for a playoff series. So I think it just opens the the entertainment factor, which, yeah, I think that's a great thing. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited for it. And, you know, if it doesn't work, then revert back to it. But I don't think the category should be scared of trying something new. That That's my only fear. Like I, I've been saying for years, Let's give things like this a try. Um, but I'm just afraid that if it doesn't work, like if it, if it is a dumpster fire, that they won't then revert mm. back, that they'll keep trying to push forward and tinker with it and make it even more complicated. But let, let's see how it plays out before we get too carried away. I was about to say time will tell the tale. Yeah, that's it. Um, and also on next year, uh, the Super 2 calendar was released as well which you get a home round next year. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's very cool. You know, my first car race meet was actually at Simmons Plains. So it feels a bit full circle, to be honest. Um, even a few years ago, my first supercar round that I went to was at Simmons Plains. So yeah, it's very, very cool. You know, I've done plenty of laps, albeit in pretty slow machinery, like my Hyundai XL or Toyota 86. But um, I've done plenty of laps around that place. So I feel like I know it like the back of my hand. And it's very cool to, you know, have all my, I've already spoken to a bunch of my school friends and they're going to get a bus and come up and, um, you know, my family will be there and, you know, be able to get all my sponsors to around locally, which will be really cool rather than, you know, sometimes they might come to Perth or Sandown or something. So, no, I think it'll be um, very, very special to have my own round for the first time. And uh, good for you as well, because you said you don't like doubling up races <laughs> next year. So there, there's only one Bathurst, which is a good sign. Yeah, I think... Um, from the learnings I had from the week just gone, I'm pretty excited to already get back to Bathurst. So it's nice yeah. to not drive around there so scared, but um, I'll be able to have a proper crack next time, which is very exciting. And, you know, I think this year having the two rounds at Bathurst also maybe, I don't know, for me a little bit, just dulled down the 1,000 week, you know, yeah. it's sort of like, oh, I've already been here this year. Um, yeah, so I think it'll be cool going back to the special place for just the one week next year. I think it'll be pretty exciting. That's good. And uh, thanks very much once again for joining us. And uh, we'll try and catch up before Adelaide. Awesome. Thank you. And I appreciate all the comments everyone leaves on the YouTube videos. I go have a scroll and sometimes there's a nice comment about myself or Brad. So yeah, appreciate all the comments. Thank you. And we've got Brad Vaughan back to talk about the big weekend at Bathurst where you got to drive in both categories. Uh, how'd you go switch between the two cars? Uh, yeah, it was tough going between the two cars. A lot tougher than I probably expected. Uh, the Super 2 car's got a lot more aero and we were about yep. three seconds a lap faster than the, than the main game. So, uh, yeah, that took a bit to get used to uh, across the weekend. Yeah, was that hard also being, seeing as though you were at the front of the field in Super 2 and then going kind of to the back of the field in the main game as well? 
Um, I don't see it that way. It was more yeah. just sort of making sure I do the best job. Super 2 was, was still my focus and making sure that, um, you know, we're up the front in that for, for Tickford and then playing the co-driver role with the Charter Motorsport crew, um, just driving yeah. around. And some of the things that, you know, it's caught me out pretty quickly with the Gen 3 car so much wider than the Super 2 car. So when you're going against the walls, that's that's something to be aware of. And and just the different throttle response, the different aero, that it's so much to get used to. I, su I suppose a big bonus from the weekend is that you didn't collect the wall at all. Um, was, was that the main aim going into the weekend? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Didn't want to have a, a crash there at all over the weekend. And uh, it goes for both cars, um, just sort of, knowing when to push and when not to push that was the key for me you know you, if you're pushing every single lap around there you're probably going to find a fence uh particularly you know someone a little bit inexperienced in the main series like me yep. um so yeah just sort of picked when i needed to go and picked when i didn't need to go and brought, brought it home safe except for the time that you tried to take out old mate Chaz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah unfortunately i was put into a little bit of a, a shit situation there obviously um came out the pits and, and straight into being basically lapped down. So my yeah. first in of Bathurst was, was a bit interesting. And, um, yeah, I was letting all the cars go down the straight, but Chaz decided to make it, make it move one corner before the straight. And, um, <laughs> obviously I didn't see him. So that's a bit of a shame. Yep. Um, I, I suppose at least it didn't damage the car too badly. Um, but it did put you definitely out of contention for the rest of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, ripped the front bar off, which was quite unusual how it sort of flicked off and the, and the, the bar stayed there the whole race and never retrieved it. So, um, mm. yeah, come back in, put a new bar on. We had a few issues getting a new one on and, and then got back out yeah. there and, and finished the race. Yeah. I think that's the first time I've seen, especially on the new cars bar come off like that. Yeah. It was, it was quite unique how it just sort of, um, mm. ripped off like that. It was right as Chaz's wheel sort of hit the, the corner of the, of the bar. And then went down Conrod Strait and certainly found out that I didn't have a front bar on it because the front wheels picked <laughs> off the ground going over Conrod. So, um, yeah, luckily they got it back out and um, we finished the Bathurst, one, Bathurst 1000. So that was our, our objective. Um, and I, I was surprised they didn't call a, a yellow flag or, you know, it's an a entertainment car to go and retrieve that because the race could have used it to spice it up a little bit. Yeah, definitely a safety car would have been worth it at that point. Bathurst typically has the um, the old entertainment safety car, as you'll call it, for the for the echidna or the snake or the kangaroo or the whatever yeah. bit of debris comes on the track. So I'm surprised they honestly didn't call it for the sake of just yeah. making it a bit more interesting. But um, anyway, they the charter crew ended up getting back up to Forest Elbow and got that bumper and brought it back home with them. <laughs> oh, really? So... Um, yeah, yeah. They can they can reuse it now next year. I'm sure they'll probably reuse it. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you had a chance to watch back the race? Uh, I've watched back the highlights. I haven't. Okay. Had, uh, so, so you've seen all the action. I was watch it. But yeah, I watched back the the highlights on YouTube, making sure that you know yeah. there's a lot of things you miss when you're in the car. You get out the car and you hmm. you, you got to sort of keep an eye on because I was trying to watch what was going on at the front of the race and. I got to a point when I was driving around there, I'd start to look at the big screens and <laughs> see what's going on up the front <laughs> because I'm curious to see how it goes. Um, did, what did you think of the, the battle? Because um, it seems to be a bit divided on the actual race that a lot of people are saying it was boring, uh, whereas I, I thought it was a great, um, you know, strategic battle all day. Yeah, definitely. There's... It really shows that there's two teams operating at a, quite a high level right now at the front there. And we got to see that showcased, um, you know, for that last stint particularly and throughout the whole day. So, yeah, for the diehard motorsport fans like you and me, we enjoy it. But, yeah, from the entertainment point of view and the, the average fan um, tuning on the TV on a Sunday to watch Bathurst probably wasn't as entertaining as they have come to expect. Um, anyway, back on Super 2, um, speed once again, definitely not the problem. Uh, pole in race one, but then couldn't really get it off the line. What happened there? Yeah, race starts are still <laughs> my Achilles heel. So, uh, yeah, obviously put it on pole as the only car in the 204s, and I think it was about six mm. or seven tenths back to the next car. So that in Super 2 these days is quite a gap to be on pole by. Um, and then, yeah, the, the tall diff ratio at Bathurst makes it 
extra difficult and starts mm. haven't been my greatest thing this year. We've been working on it and just bogged it down a little bit on that first race start and um, unfortunately had to try and claw back from there. So anyway, the next day I got a little bit better, so I'm slightly working on it. Yeah, um, Saturday went very well, actually, other than damn Aaron Cameron being too quick. Yeah, Aaron was was really quick. I'll honestly give him credit where due. That car was was really, really fast, and I was driving as hard as I could to try and keep up with him, and he was still gapping me by a fair bit, particularly on those first laps. So, um, yeah, whatever they got going there with Aaron and, and that team was going, going pretty good. Um, and now looking forward, um, Adelaide, the home round for you next up. Um, what are the plans between now and then? Uh, keep busy, basically, as much seat time as yeah. possible. So uh, off to Calder Park this weekend to do some state-level racing, be across to Warnable for some speedway. Um, Murray Bridge, which is my local track, for some more speedway. Uh, there's plenty on. We've got a test day in between at Winton and um, a few catch-ups to do during the weeks as well, organising next year. So there's plenty going on. <laughs> Um, and Adelaide will come up pretty quick. We're testing next week and then, yeah, Adelaide yep. will be only a few weeks behind that. Do you get an opportunity to practice starts on the test days or is it because I've heard the Gen 3 cars, the, the clutches don't like doing a lot of practice starts. Is it the same with Gen 2? Probably worse with Gen 2, I'd say. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we do get a chance to do practice starts. Uh, you yep. can't do too many because you don't want to roast the clutch and the clutches are very expensive. So yeah. yeah, we'll usually go there and do one, but it's it's difficult because Winton, you're on the the um, Revius diff ratio as such, and then we go to yep. to Bathurst where you're on the tallest ratio. So um, hmm. it's a little bit hard to to practice for for Bathurst. Yeah, and I suppose you don't want to throw the diff ratios, the Bathurst ones, in to test at Winton. No, you wouldn't get out of third gear, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Although that could be fun, just cruising around in second and third gear the whole way. I think it'd be a little bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'd still find it fast. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll try and have a catch up before Adelaide and um, all, all the best till then. No worries. Thanks for having me. Once again, a massive shout out to the Super 2 boys. I really appreciate your time. Uh, hopefully next week we might have, uh, might be the week after by the time it comes out, but we might have another really exciting interview coming up as well. So fingers crossed that that one comes off. Uh, but yeah, down in the comments, what are your predictions for the weekend? And um, is there any other talking points after Bathurst uh, other than the three I brought up? And also I'd... I'm going to try and do a video later on. I'd like uh, some suggestions about how we improve the racing at Bathurst. Uh, obviously, I seem to be in the minority where I really enjoyed that strategic kind of battle all day. Um, a lot of people, uh, oh, Bathurst was the most boring race ever kind of thing. Now, I don't want to hear go to GT3 because that is not going to work. Uh, and even running two different compound tyres because everyone's going to end up being on the same thing i'd like um if anyone has genuine suggestions uh on how to improve it and uh yeah I, i'm going to try and do a video where i analyze some of these suggestions and uh yeah if we, we come up with some solutions supercars probably won't listen to anything we say but at least we can try and give it a go so yeah your thoughts down in the comments let me know until next time i'm still dave and i'll catch you later